Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology One. In this series, we present different opinions on the GMO debate. Now, I know you've got your own opinions, but we'll try to leave those aside for now. And instead, let's focus on these four questions that will help us to understand the different sides of the debate and how they interact. Number one, where does this opinion come from? Number two, what is the author's relationship with GMOs? Number three, what specific regulations or policies do they want? And number four, how do they hope these regulations will achieve their broader goals? Today's opinion comes from Luis Herrera Estrella and Ariel Alvarez Morales. They were biology and bioengineering professors at Sinistav in Irapuato, Mexico, when they wrote this editorial in 2001 for EMBO Reports, a European scientific journal. Okay, ready? Begin quotation. For many people in the first world, genetically modified crops have become the latest incarnation of evil biotechnology, which sacrifices humans and the environment for the sake of revenues and shareholder value. The opposition to GM crops is in part due to the fact that most consumers in the first world have not yet seen any direct advantages of products derived from this new technology, be it lower prices or improved nutritional quality. Given the apparent lack of benefit, many consumer associations and environmental groups think it is unjustified to accept any possible risk to the environment that might come from the use of GM crops. But while environmental and consumer advocates in the first world fight against the worldwide use of GM crops in agriculture, hundreds of millions of people in the third world are malnourished. And while trying to protect the environment and consumers in developed countries, critics of GM crops block a technology that could be of immense benefit for the majority of people in the southern hemisphere. Any serious attempt to discuss and make long-term decisions regarding GM plants must therefore take into account the facts about poor countries that so far have been largely ignored by opponents of this technology. Another important point often left out of the debate is how to make sure that new technologies help people in developing countries. Some people argue that GM technology is controlled by large multinational companies and thus will never be used by small farmers. Consequently, instead of condemning and blocking GM crop technology, government-funded institutions and non-governmental organizations should find ways to ensure that the knowledge is transferred to developing countries. Non-governmental organizations insist that the voice of the public at large, as opposed to only scientists, should be heard and taken into account. Certainly, everybody agrees with this position. However, one wonders which public these organizations refer to. Do they represent public opinion in developing countries? Do they really know the problems and needs of small farmers in developing countries? Agriculture in tropical and subtropical regions faces specific problems that are different from those that limit food production in the first world. Since many of these problems are common to many countries and affect a wide spectrum of crops, potential solutions that can be applied to different plant species are urgently needed. Unfortunately, this is not considered a research priority in developed countries, and little is being done to address these problems. In order to make wise decisions, an international body should be created to ensure that the necessary technology reaches the places where it is needed, and to deal with the political, economic, and social problems associated with technology transfer. UNESCO has been de designated monuments as belonging to humankind, which must be preserved not only for the benefit of the locales, but for the entire world. Perhaps new technologies that could solve fundamental problems of human well-being should be given a similar status to ensure that they reach everyone who needs them. End quotation. So until next time, remember that you shouldn't hate me if you disagree with this opinion, and better yet, don't hate anybody. <laughs>